Greetings, comrade. We all know that getting power isn't easy, and once you've got it, you want to keep it. This simplified guide will explain what it takes to stay on top. Let's start with a little historical context. Throughout recorded history, people have been divided into three groups, the high, the middle, and the low. The goal of the high is to stay where they are. The goal of the middle is to change places with the high. The low are usually too busy trying to survive to have any goals, but if they did have one, it would be to create an equal society. As these groups have pursued their goals, the same cycle has repeated over and over. The middle enlists the help of the low, usually by pretending they're fighting for liberty, equality, justice. Together, the middle and the low overthrow the high. Then the middle immediately takes over as the new high. From the low's point of view, nothing changes. <sighs> Here's that cycle again. Middle and low push out high, middle becomes the new high, a new middle class takes its place, rinse and repeat. But wait, what if a clever and determined middle could take over, become the new high, and then freeze history, stopping the cycle and staying in charge forever? In fact, that's exactly what happened when the party came to power. Yeah! Early party leaders may have talked about equality and justice, but these were never the goal. The goal was always to get power and keep it. These early leaders had learned valuable lessons from the authoritarian governments of the 1930s. It's okay to imprison people without trials, to use war prisoners as slaves, to hold public executions, torture people, deport populations. And although they may have talked about equality, they also learned the importance of making inequality permanent. People had always dreamed about being equal before the law and being equal economically, you know, living in some sort of just, peaceful paradise. New technology was making this dream look more and more possible, at least a bit about economic equality. But you can't be at the top looking down if there's no top to look down from. So the party abolished private property, and now individuals own practically nothing, and the party owns everything. We've achieved permanent economic inequality. It's great to be a member of the party. Now really, think about it. If you're interested in power, you've got to have hierarchy. Us on the top, them on the bottom. And that's exactly what we've got. Big Brother is at the tip top. It's much easier for the masses to love and worship an individual than a concept like the party. Not that he's a regular person. No one's ever seen him and he'll never die, but how could you not love that mustache? Below Big Brother is the inner party. We're the party's brains. Below us is the outer party, the party's hands. And at the bottom are the proles, who are kind of like animals. Us on top, everyone else at the bottom. So how do we stay up here forever? Well, it might be useful to think about how a ruling class loses power. In the past, kings and queens might have passed on their power to incompetent children who promptly lost that power. Not a problem for us. Membership in the party isn't hereditary. We kick weaklings out of the inner party even if they're our kids. And we'll occasionally let ambitious outer party members in. That's how you got here. Heck, we could even let in an intelligent pearl or two if it weren't easier just to vaporize them. What matters is not that control passes from parent to child, but that our power structure itself gets passed down. Another way we might lose power is if a foreign nation conquered us. But this won't happen. The three super states, Oceania, Eurasia, and East Asia, are too evenly balanced. We could keep warring for eternity, and no one will ever win. It's also possible we could govern so badly that the masses revolt. Again, not gonna happen. As long as the masses don't know they're oppressed, they'll never revolt. We just have to keep them ignorant so they never realize that life could be different. If they never learn about history, they'll never know that life was better in the past. And we'll keep them busy with the war and the lottery. And of course, the thought police can always vaporize the smart ones. No revolts. Now, there are two other ways we could lose power. Remember the historical cycle with the high, middle, and low? What if a smart, power-hungry middle came along and made a grab for power? Or worse, we at the top could grow liberal and soft and actually start buying into ideas like liberty and equality and give up power willingly. Ugh. But there's a simple fix for both of these possibilities. Education. We just need to make sure that all party members have the right mindset and think the same way. They have to hate what the party hates and love what the party loves. Our hands at the Ministry of Truth 
help with this by making sure everyone is getting a nice, healthy diet of party-approved propaganda, and the thought police help by torturing, imprisoning, and vaporizing people who commit thought crime. Foolishly, in the past, leaders just worried about punishing the actions of rebellion. We don't wipe out people for crimes they have committed. We wipe them out for crimes they might commit. Works much better. Of course, we have to start young. Kids and adults have to be taught to instinctively stop themselves from thinking any unorthodox thoughts. Nah. This means sometimes they have to fail to understand simple arguments against Ingsoc, or just get bored if they hear someone start to question the party. Basically, they've got to be stupid, but protectively stupid, not can't do their job stupid. And of course, everyone needs to learn to be very good at double things. Let's say you know that Oceania is at war with Eurasia and is allied with East Asia. Then suddenly you hear that Oceania is at war with East Asia and has always been at war with East Asia. Oh no! What do you do? Do you freak out? Do you question the party? Of course not! You just recognize that Oceania was in an alliance with East Asia and that Oceania has always been at war with East Asia. You believe both of these things at once, even though they contradict each other. And then you kind of forget about the thing that isn't relevant right now. I can't stress the importance of doublethink enough. For the party to maintain power forever, the party needs to be all-knowing and all-powerful. Big Brother can never make a mistake or be wrong. The only problem is that the party does make mistakes and Big Brother isn't all-powerful. This means we have to be uh, flexible with the facts. And hey, if the facts don't match reality, all we have to do is change reality. Take the past. If the past only exists in our memories and in records, we just have to change these things to change the past. If Big Brother did happen to incorrectly predict, say, the chocolate ration, or praise some comrade who later got vaporized, we just change the records and use doublethink to change our memories. Pass rectified. As a member of the inner party, you need to be especially good at doublethink. Does this mean you're a little more deluded, a little less sane than the average citizen? Absolutely but it's controlled insanity, so it's okay. If we all do our part to believe that the party is all powerful, it will stay in power forever. Now that you know how to stay on top, you might be asking why we want to stay on top. Wouldn't everyone be better off if humanity really were equal and prosperous? Good question. In fact, the party's motive really consists